Hello everyone, happy Friday. Welcome to a new video and welcome to all the new subscribers that I've gained over the past week. I am so happy you found me and I'm glad you're here. Today's color palette is going to be in the blues and greens and I have chosen the sap green, the emerald, the intense blue and the lemon yellow from the Chomei watercolor set that was kindly gifted to me by Paul Rubens Art. So I'm just squeezing out a little bit of the paint and then I add just water, regular tap water to it and mix it in and dilute the, those paints quite a bit. This dish, by the way, I found at Cost Plus World Market. It's just a regular porcelain dish, but I really like it when I have a certain color palette. And because I don't work with too many colors at once, this one is perfect. I like to start with the lighter colors because they tend to disappear after a while because I use a lot of water so you saw me putting down the yellow first if you've been here for a while and you've watched my videos before you will know that I like to work intuitively, which means I really don't have a plan when I start putting down those colors. All I know is that I want them to mix to get lots of different greens and blues um, and make it kind of a, uh, a water, underwater seascape type. That is what I'm shooting for. I don't normally have an idea, but because of the color choices, um, the underwater seascape lens itself. So that's what I'm going for today. And as predicted, the blues and the greens are taking over and the yellows are kind of disappearing. So, and because I have a lot of water on my paper, I usually just mop it up a little bit with a paper towel. I also got my gold palette ready, meaning I just added a little bit of water to it so it can start softening up a little bit so I can use it. It only takes about a couple of minutes to do that, so that's not a big deal. But if I don't do it and I forget and then in the end I end up not using it but I really wanted to use the gold today. I haven't diluted watercolors in a while and so I noticed that I added too much water to my paints and I'm having a little bit of trouble getting more saturation. I wanted a little bit more intense colors and later on I add just a little bit more of the color into my mixes to um, achieve that. I'm also noticing some really cool mixes and I'm trying to intensify them by adding just a little bit more of that color that is peeking through. Sometimes it's the yellow, sometimes it's the darker blue. So here you see me adding a little bit more of that emerald green that is less diluted um, because it was kind of not visible anymore. That's just something for me to remember next time when I work with them not to add too much water in the beginning. I also didn't like how it started to dry in that corner and so I just added quite a bit of gold 
to try and hide that section a little bit more and also maybe help it uh, mix in a little bit but because this is a hundred percent cotton paper the paper soaks up the the watercolors quite fast and I end up with lines where the the color has already had a chance to to dry I let the whole thing dry for about a good six hours it, there was quite a bit of water on it and so it took a little bit longer to dry I like to let my colors dry organically meaning I don't want to use a hair dryer I notice that when I when I do that the colors are a lot more intense and they have enough time to soak into the paper on their own now that everything is dry, I can start the doodle process. And just like putting down my background, the doodle process is also intuitive. Meaning I look for shapes, I look for structures or blobs, anything that sticks out. And I definitely have my favorite doodles. And so that is another good way of starting when I can't quite figure out what to do just yet. And this one here is a great example of that. If I have a structure that sticks out like that and I can wrap it in lines, that's what I start doing or I start with flowers, or I start with just simple lines or circles, and that usually kickstarts my doodle process. Sometimes I start with neurographic style lines, meaning I just place lines all over the page, and uh, then I round out the corners. Today, I didn't really want to do that. I didn't want those neural lines to be the dominant part because I had more of a vision for this piece and I knew it was going to be an underwater seascape, abstract, of course. Um, I did not want to obscure my background with just lines everywhere i briefly thought about it because that is my my go-to ammo if you will but i tried really hard to stay away from it i have done underwater seascapes before and I didn't want to necessarily copy what I've already done. And so sometimes when I'm a little bit stumped as to what to um, do, I go on Pinterest or I go on Instagram and I just look for ideas, not necessarily in watercolor or in uh, painted art, specifically i look for ideas everywhere i saw these i don't even know what you want to call those the two that i did up top i saw those in a um a mosaic that was done with shells for example so that's where i took that inspiration from textures are all around us and with practice you can spot them and make them your own and bring them into your art. And these guys were supposed to look different <laughs> in my head, but that's what they look. And they're not my favorite, but it's okay. They're there and they're part of my painting and that is okay with me, even though they didn't quite turn out as I had hoped. I think I wanted them to look a certain way too badly and so I tried too hard and it just didn't quite work out as I had it 
visualized in my mind so it's okay it's they're fun they're fun to look at they're not quite perfect and that's okay so I took my ruling pen out and this is acrylic ink that I diluted a little bit with water but I had diluted it a long time ago and so the water evaporated. I wanted those lines to be a little bit lighter and I could have stopped after the first one and added a little bit more water to it but I didn't and I just continued with what I had on hand. Again it's not something I lose sleep over I just continue on and I added some dots later on to brighten it up a little bit which worked and also to be honest it kind of gives um, a little bit more dimension and focus on some other parts of the painting so I'm not too sad about it it's just sometimes when you have something specific in mind and then it turns out differently it's a little disappointing at that moment but I get over it quickly I do love that gold pen what I've noticed though if I use it on this 100% cotton paper it does soak into the paper quite a bit even if I put it on top of watercolor so that is something to um, maybe think about the it's still shiny but I think it would be even more shiny if it was a less porous substrate one little neurographic line did creep into my painting so I didn't quite manage to leave it out so but that's okay I think it was mid last year when I decided that I want to keep my doodles to a minimum meaning I could have filled this page especially this middle section that doesn't have a lot going on with lots and lots of lines and doodles but I don't want to cover up the beautiful backgrounds anymore with too much stuff. I like doodling, but I like to keep it to a minimum. I had these gold splatters in the middle section there that I just barely outlined with a very fine pen. And later on, uh, what I didn't show in this video, I did go in with some colored pencils to outline those uh, bubbles a little bit more just to give them a little bit more dimension but yeah I just like to keep it to a minimum I have some doodles that I just love to do and that's what I usually incorporate and every now and then I get bored of them and I look for new new ways to doodle but I do have my favorites for sure. One of my favorites is those dots. I cannot get enough of it. It just gives it some whimsy and it almost reminds me of another creature that is hidden within the painting sometimes depending on where you put them. And it's a good idea when you have darker spots and you don't know what to do with them, just like I was mentioning with these dark lines. So it's a good way to lighten up certain darker areas. And those lines without the dots, they would have, it would have just looked completely different. I was mentioning that I would like to do a um, recap of 2023 and I have filmed it all. I just need to put it all together and hopefully that video is going to be out Sunday. 
but I'm not 100% sure. I still have to piece it all together. It's going to be quite a long video, but it's very apparent in that video how my style has changed this past year and you can tell the point where it changed. It was quite interesting to look back. If you can hold on to those creations, store them in a safe place, keep practicing, and then when a year has passed, take them out and look at them and line them up and see for yourself the progress that you have made during that year. Sometimes we're too hard on ourselves and we think that we are not progressing as fast or as much as other people are progressing. But when you can see it in front of you, it just becomes apparent of the leaps and bounds that you have made within that year. I'm going to keep working on that video because I want it to be a bonus video for next week until my next usual upload on Friday. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this one today and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.